Excel accounting practice problem. Bill for hourly services of staff, set up items, and enter billable time. Get ready because we're about to Excel. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we put together the worksheet from a blank sheet. Now continuing to enter transactions into it. If you have access to it, there's two tabs on down below. An example tab and a practice tab. The practice tab starting out where we left off last time. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We're going to be imagining a situation where we're billing out time similar to a situation you would see in a CPA firm, bookkeeping firm, or law firm where you often have partners which are billing out this time of the staff having some rate that they're going to be applying to create the invoices in order to do that then they would need the staff to be tracking their billable hours in some way shape or form and then have some kind of billable rate either by the activity the staff is doing or just applied to the staff member their time that you're going to be billing out so that you can then create the invoices so in our scenario, we're going to be a guitar shop. So we're imagining our employees have guitar lessons that they provide. We're not doing this in order to process the payroll at this point. We're entering the time into a timesheet for the billable time on which we can then charge the clients that they have been working for. So let's go all the way to the right. We need some kind of worksheet, which in practice, if you're using accounting software, you might have built into the accounting software the option for the time to be entered directly into the accounting software. Something like a QuickBooks could have that feature available to you, which can make it easier in some ways because then you can link the timesheet to the invoice that you will be creating. However, you don't have to do that. Many types of firms might have outside software that's gonna to help to track the, in, the billable time that you might then have your, your customers or your employees be using or you might uh, you might just have them use a spreadsheet and say, hey, this is what I want you to put your information on a week by week basis. Give me your billable time, your non billable time, track that information, use it then to create your invoices at the end of the week or bi weekly or monthly or something like that. So in that case, we're, we're going to kind of mirror that here. So last time we, we did one up top. So we're going to skip this one. We're then moving down here and we're going to say our two employees are Adam and Erica. Again, this timesheet is not in order for us to bill them for their for their earnings. We're setting this timesheet up in order to track billable hours that we're then going to be charged to the customer. Imagine that these people are going to be our guitar instructors. So then we're going to say that we just, just charged the time for Adam at $75. You could try to set up a different kind of schedule to try to say, Adam, give me your billable time by what you did and try to charge by by item by service item they do or again you might just charge by the billable rate for that particular person that employee and we're going to that's what we're going to do say $75 for that employee we just made up the customers here so customer one and two we're imagining these people that you had guitar lessons with we got lazy didn't put a name in there so we got the person one customer one and customer two that he did work on on Monday and Wednesday and then Tuesday and Thursday. And then we're gonna do the same thing for Erica here with the customers that they worked on and then apply out the invoices that we'll do in a following presentation based on that information. So let's go to the practice tab in order to do this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way to the right and we're just gonna construct our timesheet once again, which you could do in accounting software sometimes, but you might just use like a worksheet like this and say, track your hours, give it to me. I'm going to copy what we had last time for Erica that we saw in a in the prior month and just paste it down here and say now we'll do another one and let's start off with Adam Smith Adam or Hamilton Hamilton which is one of our employees and let's say his rate is 75 that's what we're going to bill out I'm going to delete the time and the customers from last month and then we'll just repopulate for the new month and we're going to say he worked for customer 1 which is a made up customer, which we got very lazy about and didn't even put a name, customer name, which is it's that customer one. He worked two hours on Tuesday and Wednesday. We're imagining that being like the guitar lessons that, that uh, is being billed out. And then he worked on customer two on Tuesday and Thursday. Now, obviously, if you're doing something like guitar lessons, you might have a fixed type of lesson structure. You might say, I, I do two hour lessons and I charge you so much for the two hour lessons. Or 
you might have a, a little bit less structure in it and say, I, I'm going to charge you based on a rate based on, in our case, the, our employee rate. And you can work as many hours as is okay for you and the employee that they have time for. And then we'll charge you on that rate. If you're talking about something like a bookkeeping firm, or if you're talking about a law firm, then it's often the case that you don't know because you don't know exactly what the job is going to be like. If you do know what the job is going to be, and it's a set job, you do it a bunch of times, it's a repetitive task, then you might not want to do it by hourly rate. You might want to instead just charge a fixed amount for that particular service. However, if you're doing something that you don't know exactly how long it's going to take because it, this is a completely new or a different structure, different client, has has unique needs, then the hourly rate might be the only way to go and, you, and you're going to have to just track those billable times and then charge based on that. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy this down and say let's do the same kind of thing and say this is for Erica. So the second month for Erica and the, I'll just call her Erica and the rate is going to be for her. We're going to say 115. She's a 115 guitar instructor. She's in demand, Erica is, so we'll charge a little bit more for her guitar lessons. Her particular style, apparently, is this is the cool thing these days for guitar. Some she's got like finger picking or something. I don't know. But on Monday, on Monday and Wednesday, customer three, we're calling it. She worked with two hours and two hours Monday, Wednesday, and then we have customer four on Tuesday and Thursday. So then we're just going to sum that up. So that's going to be total eight hours for, for the four customers. Now we're going to have to bill these four customers, which we will do in a future presentation. For now, let's just add them to our sub ledger. So we know that we're going to have to track those new customers. So I'll add them to my sub ledger and then we'll create invoices in essence or transactions similar to what would be created if an invoice was created for a service item. So now we're in our sub ledger. Let's just add, we had like four new customers. So I got to add like four. Let's, let's copy from here all the way over to CO from the skinny to CO control C. And I'm going to paste that in the skinny here, right click and insert, not paste, insert the copied cells into the skinny. And then I'll delete the activity. So delete the activity. So we're starting at zero. And deleting the activity, starting at zero, deleting the activity, starting at zero, deleting the activity, and starting at zero, deleting the activity and the name. And then we're just going to call this customer one, two, three, and four for the generic names we made up. That's super lazy. You couldn't even come up with a name. It was hard because then I misspell the name. Once I come up with it, I got to come up with the name and then spell it right. So whatever. Customer one, customer two, customer three, three, and customer four. Customer four. I shouldn't even continue with this problem if it's going to be so generic without even fake customer names. Let's go ahead and add that to our total. Double click on this one, go to the end of it. And we're gonna add those four customers. So we're gonna say at the end, this one, plus this one, plus this one, plus this one. Okay, so now we've got everything we need to set up our invoices for the to bill out the time for our staff, which we'll do next time.